Sure. Uh, but I want to introduce to you your MC for the evening, uh, a gentleman who is a co-founder of the Crooked Road. He is a 30-year uh, leader and director of the National Council for the Traditional Arts, and he's the reason that we have the wonderful Blue Ridge Music Center, whose permanent exhibit opens the end of this month and that this tour celebrates. Uh, he's a fellow that loves this music heart and soul like few people I've ever met and loves the people that make it and the generations that have preserved it. Please make him welcome, Mr. Joe Wilson. Good to see all of you. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little about uh, some places that are very familiar to you. Um, places up the valley from here. Things that happened a long time ago, but they happened here. There was a time between 1720 and 1820, roughly, when uh, America uh, was taking on some people who had difficulties in other places. They came here from Ulster in Northern Ireland. They came through the port of Philadelphia. They came from uh, the Rhine Valley in Germany where they had 30 years of war. Those people were almost as sick of war as Americans are now. <laughs> and uh, they uh, poured in through the port of Philadelphia. They went through the city, they westward in Pennsylvania. They came down the Great Valley Road. And the Great Road uh, uh, came into the Shenandoah. At the same time, there were people on the east side of the mountains, English people that lived there for three generations, that needed a... They, they, the, the, the farm had been divided three times, and so kids kept coming. American families were big, and 15, 20 kids. Uh, there were some black folk over there, and if they were to have any chance in life, they had to run, and they had, this was the direction they had to run in. So there was a mixture of things that came together up, that, up and down that road, and the road kept going south as people, it, it went as far as Augusta, Georgia, uh, originally. It came down up here to Buchanan, that you know well, some of you. And a place called Looney's Ferry. It's still a little marker up there. But Looney had a ferry that went across uh, the river there, and the people could go through the water gap and continue down the, the Piedmont. <coughs> Called it the Carolina Road over there, but this was a great wagon road. Most historic road anywhere in America. If you take all of the historic roads and roll them into one, they're, they're not nearly as historic as that road that made America. After the revolution, it was extended down through uh, Abingdon, uh, Bristol, uh, went to uh, people, even went to southern Ohio, coming <coughs> down that way. They went to Missouri, they went to Arkansas, Texas, everywhere. They didn't pass through all that fast. They it. And then she's going to introduce you to an underground coal miner from Russell County. Would you make Molly walk over?
So I picked up the baby and I left all the others to comfort each other and pray for their own. Large family, 15. 12 boys and 3 girls. We all played <coughs> music and we were sitting down a while back talking about all of us had over 200 years together working underground. And we've all come out and survived. I've been through a lot of hard times. I've had open lung surgery from black lung. I've had prostate cancer and I had a light stroke. But the good Lord's been with me all the way. He's never left me and he's with me. And me and this young lady is going to sing a song that we're all trying on. We're going to try to get home one day for our Savior that died upon the cross. And I'll let her introduce the song. The song is called Traveling the Highway Home. <laughs>
and no letter from his home. And it's old me, oh my, he couldn't get a letter from his home. standing over here. He's not been introduced yet. He lives down in uh, southwestern Virginia and he couldn't afford a guitar when he uh, was coming up and uh, so he had to make one. And then he made another one and another one and by the time he got up to number seven, the local bootlegger wanted to buy the guitar and Wayne priced it at him so high that uh, he bought it, and Wayne decided then to go into guitar making. You know, he had a success already without even trying. You know. He's still making guitars. He's made over 500 now. And I'll tell you something that's not an exaggeration. It's the truth. The other day, one of his guitars sold on eBay for $51,000. Wayne says he didn't get that money, but uh, I, I can promise you that uh, this is the most famous guitar maker on the planet. His name is Wayne Henderson. We're going to start with the winner of the youth division in our banjo contest, and uh, she's 15 years old, and she comes from the city of Withville. And she's the grand winner of the youth division. And uh, would you make her welcome now? This is Lee. <laughs> 